Help you. I don't know. The radiator's boiling hot. It's never done that before. I had the water checked on the mainland. You've got anti-freezing, have you? Yes, of course. You're supposed to in winter time, aren't you? Well, that's what's causing the overheating. I better take the anti-freeze out of the van during this hot spell. This is the best I can do, I'm afraid. Unless you want me to uh, drain it off. No, no, not now. Tell me, is the swan far from here? Take the next right fork, you can't miss it. As a matter of fact, I'm going there myself. I'd offer to show you the way, only... Uh, I think you should let this cool down a bit. Do I owe you anything? No, that's all right.
Fahrenheit in northern areas to 29 degrees Fahrenheit in the south. Reports are still coming in, however, of the exceptional weather conditions on the island of Farah. Temperatures on the island are now said to be in the region of 90 degrees and still rising. 90 degrees and still rising? Surely it can't get any hotter. Apparently it can. At the mainland's in the depths of winter, this weather allows just doesn't make sense. Well, some rain wouldn't hurt. At least it would cool the air a bit. Thank you, Frankie. Mr. Callum in? No, I'm afraid not. He's on his way back from the mainland. Um, I'm Mrs. Callum. I'm Angela Roberts, his new secretary. Oh, yes. My husband said that the agency was sending someone this week. I've got a room ready for you. I'll show you the way. Actually, I'd rather like a drink first. I'm gasping. This heat is stifling. Yes, of course. May I have the pleasure? My name's Stone, Dr. Stone. Thank you, Doctor. I'll have a lager and lime, please. Yes, sir, you shall. Is this your first visit to the island, Miss Roberts? Yes, it's very pretty. I had a drive round after I got off the boat. Oh, it is hot, isn't it? This time of year, we usually have the same weather as you on the mainland. I'm sorry about the ice, but it melts as soon as it's out of the fridge. Same again, Bob? No, just one for Tinker. I must be on the way. Okay. That's the one. Oh, that's better. I think if you don't mind, Doctor, I'll finish this upstairs. I'd like to freshen up a bit. Of course. I'll show you the way. Is this all right for you? Yes, it's fine, thanks. Let's have some air. You're reading one of my husband's books. Yes, I thought I should. Is Mr. Callum's new novel interesting? I wouldn't know. He never talks about his books. At least not until they're finished, and then he never stops. Have you worked with writers before? No, mainly for publishers. God, it's hot. It's like being in the tropics. When my husband gets back, I'll tell him you're here. Callum brought my parcel yet? My husband should be back any minute now, Mr. Hansen. Tell him to bring it straight to my room. Well, he's not very polite, is he? No. He's a strange character altogether. How long is he staying here? Hasn't said. We've been trying to puzzle out what it is he does. Every day he goes out with his camera and masses of equipment, and then he spends the rest of his time locked in his room. Won't even let us in to clean up. Sounds like good material for one of Jeff's books.
Bob, what the hell do you think you're doing? Sorry, Jeff. Just wasn't thinking. Thinking? You're lucky to be breathing. Oh, are you all right? Yeah. I thought I heard something. I'm sure I heard something. I heard one. I don't know. It was a sort of funny whirring noise. Must be going off Morocco. I assume you've come from the swan. Well, maybe I did have one too many. It's this blasted heat. Sorry again, Jeff. Forget it, no harm done. But take it easy. Can. Buying up the whole place. <laughs> yeah, we've got to have something to keep us cool. The Met station's like a ruddy oven. I've never known anything like it. Oh, they're envying us over on the mainland. My publisher's threatening to pay me a prolonged visit. Oh, I'll tell him to bring some of that snow with him. We could use it. <laughs> Haven't you weather experts figured out what's causing this heat yet? Oh, we stuck with the villagers' theory that it's the bomb. <laughs> the bomb. Oh, that'll be perfectly honest as far as we're concerned. One theory's as good as another. We just haven't a clue. Well, cheerio, Jeff. See you later. Yeah, if the heat or the DTs don't get you first. <laughs> ah. Hello, darling. Hello. <sighs> Everything okay? Yes, thanks. Did you have a good trip? Mm. Apart from nearly knocking down Bob Hayward, the ruddy fool was in the middle of the road, just standing there. How I missed him, I don't know. That's strange. He was all right when he left here, wasn't he, Tinker? Oh, is that Mr. Hanson's parcel? Yes, what? He's been asking about it. He ordered it to be taken up to his room immediately. Mm, did he? Must be important. <laughs> I'll take it up straight away. Parcel, Mr. Hanson. Well, come on, give it to me. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Your new secretary's arrived. She's quite the modern miss. Really? Mm -hmm. Where is she now? It's down at the cove. She went for a swim. I'm going that way. I'll, I'll give you a lift. Oh, fine. I won't be long, darling. Then, Jeff. Hmm. Here. Hello, Jeff. What the hell are you doing here? You know why I'm here. And you made a mistake. I hope you haven't unpacked. You're not staying. Come on in for a swim. It's fabulous. Do you hear what I said? You're getting out of here. Oh, don't shout at me, Jeff. You always did go on. Cool down. Now listen to me. I'm not going through your special brand of madness again. Aren't you? For three months, I wrote nothing. I nearly wrecked my marriage. I'm not going through it again. You can't just have a girl and then walk away as though nothing has happened. Now, don't pull that on me. 
You were no untouched virgin when we met. How long was it before we tumbled into your bed? What, two hours? You needn't wait that long this time. You haven't taken in a word I've said. You're clearing out. Just like that. Just like that. And what are you going to tell your wife? That's my problem. But you didn't like the look of me? As far as she's concerned, I'm just your new secretary. You never did tell her about us, did you? What's that noise? I don't know. Sounds as though it came from beyond the point. It's weird. Strange. Bob said he heard a peculiar noise when I nearly ran him over. Sheep being dead. Sheep. What's the matter, Ben, old son? It's my sheep. They all be dead. Someone's killed my sheep. Can you lie down somewhere? Mm, yes, there's a couch in my study. How were they killed? Come on, Ben. I said, how were they killed? Can't you see he's in no fit state to answer questions? Only ask straightforward questions. No harm in that. You find the old man? Uh, yeah. You see the sheep? Uh, no. No, no, only Ben wandering about, half out of his mind. Who's he? He's a guest. His name's Hansel. Why is he so interested in the old man's sheep? What is he? I don't know what he is. He spends most of his time locked in his room. I'd like him to rest here for a while, Jeff. Give time at the sedative to work. Yes, of course. What do you think happened? Do you think his sheep were all dead? Well, who can tell? With this blasted heat, it's difficult to know what's going on. Give Mrs. Siddle a ring, will you, Jeff? Tell her I'll be bringing Ben home. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Hanson. I wonder why he was so interested in how those sheep died. Why didn't you ask him? How's Ben? No, he's calmed down. Did he say what's happened to the sheep? No, mumbled they were dead, that's all. Nothing coherent. The doctor's not sure it isn't just the heat affecting him. Uh, Mrs. Siddle, Jeff Callum. Uh, Ben's with us. He's, uh, he's not feeling too well, but Dr. Stone's going to bring him home. He did. He thinks there's something wrong with the sheep. Could you get your son to check on him? What's that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Don't worry, he'll be home soon. Well, if the 
crisis is over, I'd better start work, don't you think? Oh, where's the typewriter and the manuscript? Mr. Callum? Joe? Uh, you can't start. The typewriter's in the study where Ben's resting. In that case, I'll go and change. Get one thing straight. Can you hear me? Every word, darling. If Frankie gets to know about us, I promise you I'll break your little neck. Oh, it's only me, Miss Roberts. I brought you some fresh towels. I put them on the end of your bed. Oh, would you mind handing me one, please? Television. You come look at it. Well, the phone's been playing up too. Must be the static building up through this heat. No, I'll turn it off. Stella, mm -hmm. you've been playing around with the telly. Well, of course I haven't. You know, I never touched the thing. <laughs> oh, oh, what was that? Don't come in. There's glass everywhere. Oh, what happened this Go and get a dustpan and brush, will you, love? Oh, Look, get the dustpan. You don't oh. want the dog dashing in and getting himself cut, do you? Something's happened, and I... What's that? Look, I can't shout. I don't want Stella to hear. But you remember that noise? I said, remember that noise I heard on the road? I'll come over. Look, Stella... I'm just going to go down to the village. I might as well try and see if I can get a replacement set. What a story. What do you mean? You're off to Jeff Callum's. You men and your horse racing. <laughs> what about you women? Can't keep any secrets from you, can we? Hurry up. You missed the next race. Thank <laughs> you. 
told you to come, boy, eh? Who told you to come? Oh, well, you'd better stay now you're here. What's the matter, boy? This was a good idea of yours. My fingertips were sticking to the keys. Oh, some iced coffee will probably help. Oh. Don't you get bored here with the isolation? Bored? Yes, I suppose so at times. But then who doesn't? It's the sort of thing you learn to live with in a place like this. What happened to Mr. Callum's last secretary? Did she get lonely? Is that why she left? Well, as a matter of fact, she didn't leave. Jeff had to ask her to go. He sacked her. Why? Well, she took a fancy to him. That made her a complication. And Jeff doesn't like complications. I can understand the girl. He's a very attractive man. Anyway, she was wasting her time. She didn't mean a thing to Jeff. Of course. Well, I'd known if she had. Do you really think you would? Yes, I'm sure I would. But if you were just having fun, would you know then? Jeff isn't the kind to play around with him. It'd be all or nothing. It seems a pity that such an attractive man should want to shut himself away in a place like this. Makes you wonder what he's running away from. What do you mean, running away? What are you getting at? Well, hasn't it ever occurred to you that a man like that would need a pretty good reason for coming to live in a place like this? It's perfectly obvious he's running away from something. And it's perfectly obvious that you don't know him very well, otherwise you wouldn't talk such nonsense. Oh, but I do. I do. I'm surprised Jeff hasn't told you about me. He asked for me for this job personally. Didn't you know that? You're trying to tell me that you knew him before. Knew him? That's an understatement. You little bitch, you know that's not true. Oh, don't kid yourself. He's any different. Men are all the same. There's nothing to choose between any of them. Within half an hour of me coming here, Jeff was kissing me. I don't believe you. You're lying. <laughs> yes, I am lying. Why? Why should you lie to me? I don't know. I was angry. It's an automatic reflex when I'm being warned off. You were warning me off, weren't you? Yes. Yes, I... Uh, I suppose I was. <laughs> Thank you.
I'll get a bit more of the book written before opening time. I expected it to cool down by evening. Instead, it seems to be getting hotter. Bob never turned up, did he? No. I thought I heard him say he would, just before the phone packed in. What did he want? He was on about some noise he'd heard. Like the one we heard on the beach. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, you don't mind if I call you Jeff? No, not at all. I was wondering, you said the noise came from beyond the point. Is that where the old man's sheep were? This farm is in that direction. Well, do you think there might be a connection? Do you, Jeff? No, I don't. I'm the one who's paid to use my imagination. Next chapter. I'd like to finish tonight, if possible. <clears throat> I'll take my coffee and get the bar ready. Beating. You know you want me. I try to deny it. Quiet. Listen. Jeff! Jeff! Something's just landed over by the hill. I was looking out of the kitchen window and something seemed to come down in the field. What did it look like? Well, I, I couldn't really tell. There seemed to be a sort of glow coming from it. A glow? Hmm. Did it make a noise? Well, yes, that's what first drew my attention to it. A sort of um, whirring, whining, whining noise. Direction, is it? Yes, yes, I think so. Jeff. Hmm. Let's get out of here. I'm scared. No, I want to find out who it is. Maybe he saw something land. Well, he was well off the track and not coming from that direction. 
Well, surely if he saw something, he'd still be hovering around there. Well, maybe he wouldn't go over the hill. Maybe there's something there that even he's scared of. He's crazy, I mean it. Whatever he's doing, he's obsessed by it. Yes, she's right. If we stay out here much longer, we'll all be having nightmares. Let's go back. Now, hold it. You said you saw something. Now, that's why we came out here. Well, did you or didn't you? Well, yes, I, I thought I did. I, I thought I saw something coming down. It, it seemed to appear over the top of the hill and move slowly down, but in this heat, I don't know. You stay here. I'm going to take a look. Please, Jeff, be careful. Must have been the other side of that higher ground. Let's get out of here. Wait till tomorrow when it's light. You can't leave us here and I'm not going any further. All right. But I'll tell you one thing. I've had enough of Hanson creeping around. I'm going to ask him what he's up to. Hanson, are you in there? Hanson, do you hear me? I can't talk to you now. Go away. Open this door. Hanson, open this door or I'll kick it down. No. Give me another moment. What are you doing in there anyway? What's going on? Hanson! Hanson! The door! Close the door, you idiot! The devil do you think you're doing coming in here like that? Never mind about me. What the hell do you think you're up to? This is my hotel, not your bloody laboratory. I want some explanations, Hanson, if your name is Hanson. It is? And I don't owe you any explanation. You do if you're using my hotel as the center of your activities. Were you out there to meet whatever it was that landed tonight? Landed? You were prowling around out there. What's this about a landing? I came here to ask questions, not answer them. Yes, yes, but this landing, what was it? Look, I can assure you I can give you a complete explanation, but this is extremely important. Well, actually, it was my wife who saw it. Go on. She heard a whirring noise. When she looked in its direction, she saw light, something glowing. Yes. And she thought she saw it land. Where? The other side of the hill. Do you know what it was? Well? Yes. Yes, I do. What was it, Hanson? I don't expect you to believe this, Cullum. But for the past week, I have been convinced that this island has become the center of an invasion. The central landing point for beings from another planet. <laughs> beings from another planet? Exactly. And that is what has caused this inexplicable heat. Well, I've heard some yarns. The villagers are blaming the bomb for this theory of yours. Now it's too much. I'm not a superstitious villager, Cullum. I'm a scientist. I base my conclusions on observations of fact. Anyway, what do you suppose I'm doing on this island? I've been collecting specimens. Soil, the blood of a sheep. I've been analyzing them. You asked for an explanation, but apparently you're too dim-witted to accept it. Anyway, you've ruined everything with your crass stupidity. Here. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps I shouldn't have broken in like that. So you've been trying to photograph these uh, things? I haven't been trying to photograph them. I did photograph them. I used a normal lens at first, but unfortunately it was ineffective against the intense light that emanates from these beings. Remember that parcel you collected for me? Mm -hmm. It contained this, an infrared filter. I experimented with a special camera, and I placed it here. I used a mirror reflector, and I rigged up the shutter so that it would automatically be triggered by anything that crossed its line of vision. And something did come through. Yes, it did. I was developing the picture when you burst into the room. It would give me the proof that I so desperately need. Then what you've told me so far is pure conjecture. Cinders? Incinerated by whatever was here. Same thing happened to the sheep. They were incinerated too, burned to death. All right, I accept there's been some sort of incineration, but it doesn't have to be a, a being from another planet. I've analyzed that, Callum. It was burned by a high-frequency heat more intense than anything we can produce here on Earth, even under strict laboratory conditions. Now, there's only one place where that kind of heat exists. Out there. 
where the cosmic gases ferment and generate a heat far greater than anything we can ever imagine. That's where those beings must come from. If you're right, how are they getting here? Where are they? If we knew that, we might be able to destroy them before it's too late. Tell me, has anybody else heard this uh, whirring noise? Yes, as a matter of fact, Bob did, in the lane, over by the gravel pits, somewhere in this area. This doesn't affect you at all, does it? I appreciate how you feel. I know he was a friend of yours. But that won't do any good now. Look at this. Every particle of energy has been sucked right out of it. Hanson, we've got to warn people. They should be told. No, not yet. You forced your way in on me. You had to know, didn't you? Well, now you're going to do what I say. I've been in touch with the authorities, but they dismissed me as a crank, just like you did. But I must have evidence. And I would have got it if you hadn't destroyed that photograph. I need time to complete my tests. How much time? Two or three hours. As for warning the villagers, we must avoid injecting fear into an already dangerous situation. Callum, you notice something? This heat, this time of night, it should be getting cooler. But it's building up. I don't believe it's getting hotter, frankly. So, I think you're right, it is. There you are. Thanks, my dear. What an atmosphere. Mm. And they probably heard about Ben Siddle. I think I'd better finish that typing, Mrs. Callum. Hey, no wonder the temperature's way up. Who's been hiding her from me? Yeah, Hanson. Frankie, pour me a lager. Something wrong? No, nothing. Jeff, I know you. There's, There's nothing wrong, I tell you. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's this damn heat that's making me jump in. We've been the same at the med station, getting on each other's nerves. That's why I came here for an hour. That shows how ruddy hot it is. First aid, kid. Oh, darling, I'll get it. You'll never find it. <laughs>
Here we are. Don't touch me. I don't want to put a plaster on your arm. Well, let Ken do it. What's the matter? Well, there you go, Callum. This seat's bound to lead to irrational behaviour. I'll do it. Get Dr. Stone. Go on, take up. Back to the pub.
Look at that gas cylinder. It's split open. Just like the car battery. Completely drained of every ounce of energy. Tinker. It's impossible. I just can't believe you'd do a thing like that. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't expect you to, but these are not normal circumstances. If this heat goes on increasing like this, it could very well drive us all insane. The human body simply isn't equipped to withstand such pressure, and sooner or later the glands are going to fail, some more quickly than others. After that, it's only a matter of time before the brain's affected. That's a logical conclusion, but I think it's one we should keep to ourselves. And that's what Hansen keeps on saying, and as a result, two men have already been killed. Two? Who's being killed? How's the girl? She's all right. Who's being killed? Will someone please tell me what's going on? I'm afraid Tinker's met with an accident, my dear. Jeff, who else dead? You mentioned two. Bob Hayward. Bob? How? It was an accident. Accident? He was... Tell him. Calm down. These damn creatures are on this island, killing God knows how many people. And that's your answer. Keep calm. Creatures? What do you mean, creatures? I've had no business to tell you that. Jeff, what is it you two know that I don't? Hansen claims the island is being attacked by creatures from another planet. Claims? Oh, what do you mean? You, you, you've seen them? Bob Hayward and Tinker did. I don't understand. I don't understand. Neither do I, Frank. Yeah. His theory is that the island is being used as a test base for an invasion. Don't ask me why. Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? These beings have to discover if they can possibly survive in our atmosphere. Oh, that's incredible. Is it? We probe space in a constant search for information about other planets. It's logical to assume that the same sort of thing might be happening in reverse. Are you saying that Earth has become the subject of a probe? Carried out by creatures from another planet? Yes, I am. And what I saw land tonight was one of those creatures. Yes. One of their number forming a sort of spearhead to find out if life is possible for them here on Earth. And if it is possible? Then the main force will come. Yes, but have you any idea what they need to survive? Heat. The way in which that car battery and that gas cylinder was split up suggests that they were seeking energy to generate heat. They obviously needed to exist. Oh, that's fine, fine. In the meantime, we sit around waiting for you to complete your tests. The temperature's risen three degrees in the last half hour. 108. At this rate, we'll all be dead by morning. I'm prepared to accept that the situation is serious. However, the indications are that we're approaching a crisis. Hansen! And getting emotional isn't going to help. We must alert the mainland. How? Telephone's out of action. Now, what about the med station? They should be able to transmit a message. I'll drive up there. Oh, just a moment, Doctor. This could be very dangerous, you know. Well, someone has to go. We've lost enough time already. Very well. Uh, but don't go till I come back. I'll come with you, Doctor. Oh, there's no point in both of us going. Now, you stay here and look after the girls. And, Jeff, I should leave that alone. That's a good chap. Too much of it doesn't help in a crisis. This will help you to keep in touch with us. Ariel, press to speak, release to receive. Got it? Yes, thank you. Good luck, Doctor. And be careful. Don't worry, I will. These creatures, are they likely to attack us? Depends what they're looking for. Personally, I think they're more concerned with finding a new source of energy to keep themselves alive. But once they found it, they'll spread to the... to the mainland. Yes. Hello, Hanson. Are you there, Hanson? Yes, Stone. I can hear you. Where are you? Where are you? I'm on the road to the point. I just passed White's Meadow. I can see the outline of the Met Station in the distance.
The radiator's boiling up. She's losing power. How far are you from the station? Well, I'm not sure. About a mile and a quarter, I should say. She's slowing down. She won't hold out much longer. The heat's affecting the engine. It's very really dark out here. She's pulling badly. There's the gravel pit coming up. I can just make out the entrance. She's stopping. Henson. I'm on the road. There's a gap in the fence. There looks like something. It's that noise. Stone! Stone, get away from there. Can you hear me? Get away from there. It's your only chance. I can't hear you. It's this noise. was the result of an accident or a deliberate interception. If it was deliberate, it means that we're not dealing with brute monsters, but with a superior intelligence. Which do you think it is? I don't know, Mrs. Callum. I honestly don't know. There must be an answer to these things. We've got to try again. I'm going this time. Wait, Callum! <laughs> If you go out there, you're going to risk sacrificing another life. The doctor took the risk. Anyway, we can't just leave him there. We've got to find out what's happened to no. him. No! I'll have to go. Well, I'm not being heroic about this, I can assure you. But Stone was taken by surprise, and I think I'm better equipped to deal with a situation of this kind. He's right, Jeff. Take your Land Rover. Got the keys? Supposing those things are still out there, what will you do? Well, if they are there, I shall have to try and avoid making the same mistakes as Dr. Stern, won't I? You keep these doors locked, and that set switched on. Lock the windows, Frankie. Towards me. His, 
It was. I thought you. It's, it's all right, Angela. It's all right. He's gone now. There's no need to be afraid. Come on, lie down. I shouldn't think we'll hear from Hanson just yet. It's too soon. You knew her before, didn't you? Who? You know I mean, that girl. You knew her before she came here. No. Don't lie to me, Jeff. I've said I didn't know her. I saw you kissing her in the study. Well, that doesn't mean I knew her. Ever since she came here, you've been... Tense. Just as you were before we moved. Frankie, let it be. You did know. All right, I knew her now. Leave it at that. It wasn't difficulty with your writing, it was her. That's why we moved here, isn't it? Drop it, Frankie. You're overwrought. It's the heat, it's affecting us all, so, so let it go. Are you in love with her? Well, answer me. Are you in love with Not her? Not now, Frankie. We're fighting for our lives. But it's important to me. I must know. Tell me, are you in love with her? No. Then what is it? I wanted her. I wanted her body. Now you know. She was a slut and I wanted her. But not anymore. I didn't ask her here. She's no more than a common slut. There's no comparison with what I feel for you. That's why we moved here. It was completely physical, I promise you. She never meant a thing to me. She, she never will. Where is everybody? Where's the doctor? He's not here. Go back to the study. Get him. I need him. He can't come. Go back and lie down. He should be here. I'm ill. I need him. Where the hell is he? Well, he can't come, you selfish bitch. He's dead. Answer. Yes, I can hear you. Where are you? I'm at the gravel pit. I found Stone's body. He's dead. He's been burned to death, just like all the others. The ground here is all scorched. This is obviously the way they came. I can see something. Something glowing down in the pit. It's getting hotter. 
I'm going in. Hanson, be careful. Remember, two people have already died there. It's horrible. What's he doing there? It's very dark in here. I can't see very far. See it again. It certainly is a light source. The light seems to be. Hanson, I'm not receiving you. Hanson, do you hear me? What's wrong? Why doesn't he answer? Hanson? It's a woman. I'll have to stop her. I'm all right. The aerial must have been screened by the pit. But I've discovered something very important, Callum. They're attracted to light. To them, it's a source of energy. So turn out all your lights. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Is there anything else? No. I'm going on now. I'm going to drive without lights. So I'll contact you when I get up to the station. Thank God it's all right. seen the creatures themselves. I wonder how many there are. Do I get the orange juice? How long do you think it would take to get there? Not long. If he gets through. Why doesn't he contact us? Jeff, Jeff, don't you panic, please. If it's possible for him to get through, he'll manage it. How do you know he will? How do you know he's not dead as well? It's 
It's only five miles to the point. He ought to be arriving at any moment. Intermediate frequency for, for range for four miles. No wonder we haven't heard from him. If he's at the mess station, he can't use this. He's out of range. Well, what do we do now, if he's out of range? Do we just wait? I can't. I can't stand this. Another minute. I feel the same. I want to get away. We must go to the Met station ourselves. Yes, yes. Anything's better than this. We'll take your car. I know a shortcut. Come on, darling. I'll drive another way. We were in the office when the lights blew. We heard the explosion and found the operator. We got into the wardroom, but he was dead, burned to death. Well, that explains it. That finally explains it. Well, then, would you mind letting us in on the secret? It's quite simple. Your station is the means by which these beings got here. But this station? You must be aware of the fact that increasingly we've been sending out high-frequency impulses to explore space. Bouncing signals off stars, that sort of thing. Exactly. Now, to us, these impulses are useful, but they're quite harmless, aren't they? But to these beings, they represent a life force. I see. Do you? Oh, yes, we've attracted them to us, but that still doesn't explain how they got here. That's quite obvious, isn't it? They must have honed in on your scanner. Look, these beings are composed of high-frequency impulses in heat form. They transfer from one place to another like any form of high frequency does. In fact, they transferred onto this planet like a television picture does from a transmitter to a receiver. Using our scanner as their receiver. Exactly. And then they materialize in the Earth's atmosphere. Materialized? In the same way as the satellite television picture. It starts in outer space as a signal and then materializes. Do you realize what you're saying? The Earth's surface is literally dotted with scanners, TV scanners, radar scanners. If these beings succeed, they'll heat up the whole surface. Earth will be just another hot planet. Like so many others in the constellation. Well, we've got to stop them. We've got to destroy them before they destroy us. Have you got any explosives here? No. All we've got are a couple of revolvers and some ammo. We've got some flare guns in the stores. Would they be any use? Yeah, get them. Wait, the quarry, there's uh, bound to be some jellyknife there. Anybody there you can get in touch with? Like hell, I'll get over there and help myself. I'll be only too willing to apologize if we succeed. I'll take the van. Whatever you do, don't forget, drive without lights. I'm getting to be quite the criminal. She's slowing down. She'll blow any moment. Come on, damn you, keep going. It's that noise again, I can hear it. you coming and panicked. Have you seen Hanson? Yeah, he's at the station. Oh, good. They got to us. Anyone hurt? Yeah, the operator. Burnt to death. Go you all right? Huh? Just put the car in the ditch. I'll give you a hand. Here, sit down. Under the wheel. Right, start her up. All right, push. Put her in reverse. I'll uh, take Angela with me. It'll lighten your load. Right. Managed to contact the mainland. No. Yeah, Frankie. Here we are. Fine. Get them tied up in bundles of three, like I told you. Now, look, this is what I've got in mind. We'll have to split up into two separate groups. Is that a good idea? It's absolutely essential. You know those hayricks out in the point there? 
Foster and I are going to go up there with the dynamite. And I'll set fire to the Hadricks with this very pistol. Now, wait a minute. You said these creatures were attracted by light. It'll bring them out into the open. Foster here will intercept them with the dynamite, and I'll double back and help him. And what'll we be doing while all this is going on? You'll go to the top of the cliff. And as soon as the fires are alight, you'll send up the rest of the signals to alert the mainland. And there's nothing else we can do. Has anybody got any better ideas? It's going to take us 15 minutes to get to the Hayricks. The moment you spot my first flare, that's your signal to move, right? Foster. Remember, 15 minutes. Why do you think Hanson split us into two groups? Well, if he and Foster fail, it'll be up to us. That's what I thought. He's a peculiar chap, but he's got guts. Angela seems to be taking it pretty badly. Ken, if things get tough, will you look after her? It'll leave me free to take care of Frankie. Sure. That's it. Let's go. from the direction of the meadow. Come on, we must keep going. Jess! I'll get her. Take this. Little idiot. 
Who do you think you are telling me what to do? It's my life, not yours. You wouldn't have stood an earthly out there on your own. At least we had a chance by sticking together. I didn't ask you to come after me. Why don't you go back to the others? I don't leave you here by yourself. Oh, no. Whether you like it or not, I'm staying. I hate you. Leave me alone. Now, look. I'm just as scared as you are. Well, we mustn't give up. We'll, we'll find a way. I know we will. die like this than be burned alive out there. All right, go on, do it. But kill me first. You? Yes. You're right. It's hopeless, completely hopeless. So for once in your damn life, do something for someone else. Oh, go on, shoot! Damn you. What is it with you? Don't you think I'm old enough to take care of myself? Come <laughs> on. 